Greetings and welcome to this all new Trapco DAO session. I hope you're doing great today because we're gonna create this nice uh, endless staircase uh, spiral looping thing. And uh, doing so, we're gonna look at a few ways to create uh, spiral paths for our Tao lights. Uh, one of which we're gonna use expression and then we're gonna uh, see how we can <coughs> make ourselves our little uh, main control panel which will help us to build uh, different iterations upon uh, our system that once we build solidly will always loop in a seamless fashion so uh, let's get in After Effects and let's right away see how uh, we can do that step by step so first as we always do let's create a new composition I'm gonna make this one uh, 180 uh, 1080 by 1080 uh, 900 frames Let's do that, and uh, I'm gonna create a new solid, so control Y, and let's call this one Tau. And let's apply Tau to that. So we can already uh, shut down our automatically generated path. And uh, let's look at a few ways we can have some spirals there. So first, let's create ourselves a Tau light, a, a Tau spotlight, all caps, very important. And uh, let's click OK. And um, let's uh, get in Illustrator. So I've just made a new file here. And uh, if you get under this tool here, under this, uh, in the tool menu, you have the spiral tool here. And uh, picking this up, you can double click in your document and uh, this panel will uh, appear. And uh, here you can decide, uh, for example, the radius and uh, you have couple more options here the amount of segments that uh, we'll get in our spiral the way uh, the direction it's pointing so if we click OK then we get a nice spiral and then we can just delete it and now that we have those settings perhaps you want something else but then you can just click and drag and get it the, the size you want and I think you can also like oh if you hold down con the control key then you can uh, also uh, uh, have it do that so uh, once you once you selected once you are happy with your spiral then uh, you can simply pick it up with the, the white arrow here and we can grab this and simply copy that and get back in after effects and let's hit p to reveal the position and uh, we can control v paste it on there and we'll have uh, this uh, this kind of a spiral shape Let, let's make it bigger so uh, I'm going to simply delete it and uh, let's make it much bigger. So once again, I'm going to copy it and uh, bring it there, paste. So we have this big old spiral now. And uh, if we want our geometry to be angled correctly, perhaps this is the kind of result that you're looking for. But one thing that we can do is right click, get in the transform options and uh, auto orient we want this to be set to off so as I click OK we'll see that uh, this is the result that we now get so we have a nice spiral going around and we can set this up if we want to set this up correctly uh, this is two seconds by default we're always uh, at 10 seconds so uh, it's perhaps it's a good it's a habit that I have that to set everything uh, on this base at first and uh, change that if I really need to do so for a reason so um, that's what we're getting out of that we can then create a new null so control shift alt y and uh, this null is right at the center let's make it 3d and uh, right or while I'm at frame 0 I can uh, connect the light to uh, the null and if I would want my spiral to uh, offset in Z for example as it moves along I would uh, simply keyframe those values so let's one let's add one on the last frame and uh, get back at the first frame so we can see our result so I'm pushing it back and uh, the first keyframe is the one outside so if I want it if we want to change that we can simply grab those keyframes here and go uh, right click keyframe assistant and time reverse keyframes so now we can push the center back in the distance. 
So that's one way of doing it. You can then uh, get in the segments and repeat n gons instead of uh, our path path extrusion. So that's uh, kind of uh, the result that we get. So that's pretty cool. But let's look at another way to uh, have our spiraling path. Let's look at how we can do that with expressions. So uh, I'm gonna delete this null here, and uh, I'm gonna get rid of all keyframes on this slide. So uh, it's still showing up the uh, spiral here because it's still cached in the memory, but if I hit Control Alt Front Slash, then we get back at the default. So I was just searching for a way to, uh, I just Googled it. So uh, what did I create a spiral expression after effects? So I Googled that and that's the first choice that I came upon. And uh, clicked here and Varo Toots, CGI Tots Plus. So it's by Ewan Smith on the April 8th of 2010. So it's a little while ago and uh, I didn't even watch his video but I'm sure it's pretty uh, awesome I'll put down the link in the description below so I just went down in here in the comments and uh, this guy here Dane four years ago he just decided to post this so thank you Dane um, for making spirals here is a, a, a quick reference so uh, what he says here is this first patch of code here is uh, straightforwardly to make a, a spiral and uh, if here he says or with z depth so here the only thing that's changed is this line here so here is c equals zero and this is z times multiplied by time so it will uh, allow us to uh, offset it in z as well so I, let's copy this code here and let's get back in after effects and uh, we're gonna alt click on the position here and uh, let's paste the code so by default this is what I'll get so uh, let's look at what's happening here uh, we don't need to necessarily understand what's uh, going underneath the hood but uh, we can point down a few things that make sense so here we have a uh, center 640 by uh, comma six 360 uh, so we can pretty safely say that this is the center point and in our case, uh, it's going to be 1080 by 1080. So half of that is going to be 540 by 540. So if we type down these values here, uh, we're going to get it right at the center. And uh, what's happening to Z? So don't now we don't have any keyframes. So that's pretty cool. So what's happening to Z as we move forward now? It's getting a little bit offset. So it's getting as much of an offset as uh, we're moving uh, forward in time so 100 at 300 frame so that's maybe uh, not enough so let's do something we're going to create a new null so control shift alt y and let's call this settings and uh, i'm going to make it green and on this we're going to add a couple of things which will become our main uh, control panel for our little spiraling system. So let's let's get in the uh, effects expression control and let's add a slider control and let's call this one radius and let's duplicate that and let's make another one which we'll call uh, depth. All right, and let's look at what we got over here. So radius equals 1,000 divided by shrink shrink is time plus one all right so uh, what if I put 1000 here and then I connect this number here to that let's try it so now we have this code here so this is what's controlling our radius so we can control our radius doing that and uh, Z is time multiplied by time so we can perhaps so simply add another multiplier and uh, drag the pick width onto our depth slider and then that will uh, kind of uh, influence our depth so pretty awesome now we don't have any keyframes and uh, we can keyframe those and uh, we can have 
some kind of a nice uh, spiral. And the angle, what will this change? Let's try that. Let's, we're gonna make another value here. Let's call it angle. And by default, it's at 200. So let's make it 200 and let's grab this over here. So this will this will change uh, the amount of spiraling. So let's keep it at 200, the default value. And uh, that's, yeah, th so now we have our nice uh, spiral system. Uh, let's get in uh, back in Tau. Now we can increase or decrease the amount of segments depending on what we're after. Uh, we can rotate our pieces here. So let's add a couple of those. And uh, we can increase their size. Now we have a chamfer, but we can get rid of it by checking it off. So let's make uh, that many. And uh, I don't remember the exact value I had on my thing. So let's uh, simply experiment here. So here, if we change that, also we can uh, change uh, the duration it's uh, it's using to build up. So let's try something different now. At ten, uh, not one hundred. At, at ten, we have something like that. And if we bring this down, is it the same thing as if we increase the amount of segments? Yes, pretty much. So we can leave that at ten maybe by default and the amount of segments so we get something like this and then we can uh, get down to the repeat path section and uh, let's open up the first repeater and let's uh, make one copy for uh, a start and uh, let's not offset it on the X but let's let's see what we get if we offset it on the Z Let's also change the rotate Z. All right, so let's uh, animate it. So if we want some movement in there, we can uh ah. <laughs> All right, we can also uh, get in here. Let's let me shut down the repeater. So uh, I was uh, beginning to forget what made it look like stairs more so these are kind of triangles here that we have and uh, if we rotate our light and if we set that to something around 90 degrees maybe then we get some kind of uh, stairs and of course we we can make it different by changing the uh, amount of sides here depending on what you want to get and that was the the rotation of course these are kind of going to be a weird weird staircase because they're all angled but it's just the important thing is uh, if it looks cool or not so let's get back to the repeater and uh, set that 
to one. So that's pretty cool. And uh, what if we change the size, get it back to three there, and uh, let's increase that. Let's play around with those values here. So that's pretty neat. Uh, let's keyframe some offset in here. So, uh, and then we can go in the offset section here. And uh, what we can simply do at first is create a keyframe on frame zero. And then uh, let's get to frame 90. And uh, let's set that to 100. Let's check loop offset and uh, let's check off offset size and let's check offset position. So let's get on frame 89 and we're gonna try to see what we get out of that. So that's one way that we can have it loop, but there's gonna be some kind of a weird thing going down <laughs> our stairs as it, as it do so. But it's uh, pretty straightforward, it's gonna loop. And there's another way that we can also make it loop without having the loop offset checked. So let's check this off. And once we do that, uh, the offset is going to work differently. So um, let's hit U here. I'm going to get rid of uh, my keyframes for the moment. So if we set this back to 100, we have nothing. At 0, it's all there. So as I make it grow, it's, it's going to make it disappear. Or we can animate it in like that. So that's something that, of course, we can do. <coughs> but um, what if we want simply to make it move? So what we can always do is we can make our first keyframe for the offset here. And let's get on frame 90. And for our second value here, what we're going to do is we're going to look at amount of segments that we have so in this case uh, 219 so I'm gonna simply say here it's uh, 100 divided by 219 all right so let's make a marker here shift 3 and I'm gonna hit home to get back at frame 0 and shift 1 so I can alternate between both and uh, it's the same, but what's happening in between is slow movement. So it's going to move one step to another, and it's going to automatically loop. So that's pretty nice. It's not going to be uh, necessarily super fast like 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 the other uh, way of doing it. With uh, but that way we can offset even. Uh, a lesser amount of frames so 90 frames it's already not a lot but let's say we this is pretty slow and we can even make it like 10 frames let's, let's look at that and let's make it loop at 9 so that's like oh that's if that's this kind of this kind of speed that you want so you, you can use that as a basis so let's go even further we can still output up to 90 frames and uh, if we want this to continue happening then we can simply all click on the stopwatch here and uh, get on the little arrow here and under property and we can say loop out type cycle so that will make it so it goes there and then it starts over again but we have to be a little bit clever about this because now we're using 90 uh, frames but if we wanted to loop perfectly, we of course have to make sure that uh, this duration is uh, an amount that this value can be divided by. So 90 can be divided by, by 10. It's 9. So we, can, uh, we would also be able to uh, put it at uh, 9. Like I'm going to hit Alt, left arrow here. So this will make it uh, a loop as well. It'll go a little bit faster even. And that means we can also use any other uh, 
multiplier of 90, so 45. It's going to do it twice. But then again, maybe 90 is not uh, practical enough if we want to divide it by things. So we're going to use 60 in this case. So let's go to frame 60 and uh, let's set that to. Uh, so we're going to go frame 59. I'm going to bring my marker here at frame 60. So uh, let's go to uh, 20. And let's bring this over here. So this is going to happen three times in our loop and then what we can do is um, this here we have the uh, path offset which we can play around with so if we change this value here let's bring it to minus 14 uh, like this changes this will offset our whole path so we can uh, animate that over the course of uh, this whole 60 frames duration loop so uh, one way that we can do it is with a looping wiggle so let's uh, get back to uh, internet and uh, we can google that so I'm gonna go look for wrong with my internet. Uh, let's go to uh, Dan Ebert's Wiggle. So this guy here, as I've shown in other uh, tutorials of mine, is uh, this code here that we can copy and paste. And uh, let's paste that on directly onto the path offset property here. So let's do this and uh, let's make sure that we got uh, the correct values here so frequency 1 amplitude uh, 110 and let's add those in the settings here we can make more custom sliders so uh, offset uh, rec and offset amp for the amplitude and our loop time uh, is 2 so let's set that to 2, it's 2 seconds 60 frames 2 seconds alright and uh, that's uh, pretty much it oh, one more thing that we can do if we want to be able to uh, scramble that so we can add also an offset seed random and uh, we can go right here and uh, type down seed random open parentheses and let's bring this here and close the parentheses and let's make sure we have our semicolon here so um, there we can also pick up our frequency here so frequency let's put one and uh, amplitude let's bring it there to the amp so default values so that will make it um, offset and if we look at our frame 60 and our frame 0 is going to be looping but this are probably going to be uh, these values are going to be way too crazy for that but let's look at what we get by default so everything is moving along but it and it's looping but it's way too fast so we want to reduce the uh, if we reduce the uh, amplitude here and uh, it's gonna wiggle around this value so remember what was doing so we don't want to go more than like 14 for the amplitude so let's set that to 14 and uh, the offset we don't want it to uh, go that fast so let's set that to 0 
and let's see what that uh, gives us now so yeah that's more like it we have a little bit more complexity in our loop and uh, since our repeated paths are offset it it looks a little bit more uh, uh, complex than if we didn't have this wiggling of the r1 path value here in our repeater properties so let's just click on here the uh, enable expression button here if we shut it off we can simply look at our result uh, without uh, without this expression happening so it it's uh, uh, there let's shut it off so it when it's shut down it's nice loop continuously maybe that's what you're after it's just going to uh, endlessly uh, do that and uh, if we want this like there this uh, level of complexity we can even output only 19 frames in this in this case but i find it pretty fun that we can play around with this and add a little bit more uh, complexity and still have our loop principle uh, functioning pretty pretty nice pretty uh, pretty awesome so we're doing it to that we could do it do it to anything else maybe the even on the rotate the uh, properties I'm not sure that's gonna be interesting but think about how you can apply this principle on other properties other things and uh, get awesome results so now that this is set up we can uh, change the amount of segments so if we want more uh, but remember that we need to change this value here always it has to be divided by 457 now so uh, the offset here let's type down 100 divided by 457 right so that's just the only thing we need to worry about and uh, frame one last frame they are the same let's run it down oh that let's run it down so that's pretty fun and in this case since we're not using the build up uh, uh, thing we can actually mess around with those randomness value without it uh, messing up our loop I think so let's uh, add some randomness on rotation rotation x or maybe that's a little bit too intense on rotation y what do we have to make all those uh, steps a little bit less uh, perfect so if we do that we still have something that loops let's try it out so that's still uh, going to work n no matter what we mess around with uh, in terms of those values is it is it working doesn't look like I'm gonna empty the cache just to make sure that we've got something that uh, makes sense here so oh it seems that we have some jumps so let's try to see what's going wrong I'm gonna shut this down what is happening here yeah of course it it won't work <laughs> guys because we're offsetting only two uh, only one step so we can't really play around with with those as it will look different uh, so let's add this back in and now only at this range it'll it won't loop but let's go here frame 59 and let's make sure it loops so 
there we go and uh, of course if we want to reduce uh, the amplitude we always can so let's have less movement slower movement so let's see what we have here So it'll always uh, work fine. And if we can, if we really want to mess around with those randomness values, well, we only need to make sure that they are the same. Uh, they are at zero on frame one uh, and at frame three. So we can make something like this. Uh, let's go rotation Y. So let's add a keyframe here. Let's go three and let's add I'm going to hit U to see uh, my uh, random rotation Y here and let's add another and let's get right in the middle and then let's scramble let's scramble our stair rotation here so what kind of a loop that we'll get now is as it does its thing it's going to go all messed up and then it's going to get back and will will that work? Will th will that actually work? No, because this needs to be happening according to this. And it also needs to loop. So let's make it just slightly, so we can have a pulse pulsating. Uh, will that work? So some pul pulsating randomness in there, maybe. And this is uh, like 60. So if we think that it's a little bit too fast of a pulse, we can always bring it to 30. These two, let's hold Alt and uh, drag those frames here so we can uh, and hit Shift so it snaps so then it's gonna loop twice and it's gonna still work with the our principle here so that still loops fine and uh, let's reduce the amount of segments so 257 and now this value is 100 divided by 257 and right on this frame here so let's try that and uh, so that's something that we can loop out. And we can can we even make it this the whole way? No, I said earlier it was it had it has to be uh, it has to be equivalent to uh, this the this loop time. So if I had this here, then it would work. Let me go really slow. And it will pulsate. Depending on what you're after. So let's save that and the stairway number two. And let's light it up a little bit. So uh, now my light is what color? Let's make it pure white, or let's make it not entirely pure white. So I'm going to go 253, 252, and 254. So not exactly wide, but almost. And uh, let's create an ambient light. So Control Alt Shift L. 
and ambient I'm gonna call it M and let's make this a little bit of a tiny outside sky blue shade but ju just a touch not not very much and that's gonna make it look like this at first but then let's uh, make another one and uh, let's call this one Lumi light get a point light and let's make this one a warm color and now we have this but let's get in the options and make sure it's picking it up as a Lumi light so now this has to be called Tau Lumi what am I what am I doing here? So check this option here. We get different results. And uh, let's bring it backwards there, right down to the bottom of our staircase. And uh, the center point, is we know that it's uh, 540, 540. And we can bring it to the center, but simply just offset it a little bit on the, on the left and up. Where does it seem to go in terms of depth? So if I go to frame 300, this is all the way back to all the way back to uh, 19,900 pixels. So let's bring our Lumi back all the way back to there. And now perhaps uh, we can make it a little less deep. So let's bring this way back. And this is going to make it 4,300 deep. So let's bring back our line there. And let's see. does look fine at uh, 210 of depth and let's bring this down here and uh, we can increase the radius for this Let's get in the visibility, maybe. And we can decide where it ends. So if we s say we want to end that around here, so that's 3440 pixels. So let's copy that onto the end and let's bring that us get a little bit more there so now we have this kind of fog here um, and uh, let's get in the ambient occlusion so now we can increase its intensity and uh, when when it's set to multi sample uh, we have this kind of uh, line here on the right at the on the creases so 
what I like to do is set it to super sample and that will kind of cancel that a little bit and uh, let's set that to on so now we have nice shadows right here which we can control by uh, playing around with that so depending on what scale they have so we want this shadow to be a, maybe a little bit larger and let's also increase the scale value here and let's bring this higher so we'll we can overdo it so just we see where it fills and then uh, That's just a matter of you, uh, how you want to tweak that, and uh, can increase the amounts of bits per channel to make it uh, perhaps a little more detailed. And we still do have our looping emotion here. Let's create a new background and make it white to make sure that uh, uh, it's all filled up. And let's create a new camera, let's make it 35 millimeter. And uh, that did change some of the. here depending on how much light you want to come over up there all right set this back to 50 millimeter hmm, I like this one best Then uh, let's create a new adjustment layer on that and let's add some levels. And let's make sure that it's uh, tight, as tight as it can be. So the ambient occlusion is doing all the work here in terms of uh, detail let's add a little bit more color here so that's coming through a little bit more like uh, warm and let's add a little bit more blue in there or maybe not. Let's add some curves.
since we have uh, our light, we can move it up or down depending on where we want the light to hit. Or move it around. And uh, also always control its, its radius and its intensity. So maybe in this case we want it that much of an intensity and that much of radius. previous result so yeah maybe something like that and then we can always get in uh, it's all a matter of tweaking and there's no real uh, true right choice here but we can turn down the ambient and that's what we get something more like that increase the diffusion Hold out. If you want more or less specular. Let's see what we have here. Let's get back to our fog. So we can pretty much fill this up back again like that. All right. And then we can maybe Add a new solid over that, and let's make it uh, really dark like that. Hit OK. Select the ellipse tool, double click, invert it. Hit M twice. Reveal the mask options, and let's feather it a little bit. And uh, let's click on here so we can see our mask, and let's bring this out so we don't want to have any towards this side any uh, graduation any any grading but let's have some over on this side because it's gonna help uh, to bring uh, more the illusion of shadows on this side here so let's set that to multiply or darken and let's reduce the intensity the op the opacity of it so that makes it a little bit more uh, focused. I mean, it, it helps to uh, bring the focus to the right area in the image. And then on top of that, we can add another adjustment layer. So I'm hitting Control Alt Y, and uh, let's get in the color balance. And sometimes what I simply do on top of everything is bring up the highlight red balance to get some warmth in here and then some dark blue shadow blue balance to get a little bit more blue on the shadows always depending on what you're after exactly you can mess around with those here get different results depending on what you like best and maybe you don't you don't want this to apply all the way now just maybe a little bit so that can be 
something that can be done and let's save that so uh, yeah that's what I had to show you today and uh, remember now we have our little control settings panel here that we can bring all the way up here and uh, this is always parametric we can change that and it, it will not mess up our loop here So uh, that's pretty much what I had to show you today. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.